the big cats of Britain search continues. This time, we're heading down to the part of the UK which has the most sightings for big cats. This part, the foot of the UK I suppose, is Cornwall, Devon and Dorset. If you're up to date with this series, then you'll remember in one video we talked about a little place called Harrow Barrow, or as my girlfriend calls it, Harry Barry. That's where we will be conducting our search. There was a big cat sight in there recently and a print of a big cat has been confirmed by the RSPCA with the police stating something has been here which shouldn't have been. That obviously got me excited. We only had four days down in that region so time was quite limited but on with the journey we go. Alright so this is the first day of our Cornwall trip. We're going to head down now to Harrow Barrow. We've got the camera trap in the car. It's in the boot. We're stocked up ready to go and uh, we're going to try and find somewhere down there and uh, stick it down there and we're going to leave it for the duration we are down in Cornwall. Let's commence this drive. It's about 200 miles so it's going to be lovely and fun. Let's do it. with the badger yeah. that was pretty sick and then obviously we got got a little foxy running in our garden so that's like that's pretty cool but even we, we want to go one bigger you know yeah. we want we want a lynx we want a leopard we want a puma something like that and uh hopefully while we're down here can you oh could you just imagine how sick that would be that would be amazing <laughs> So we are here in Harrow Barrow. Uh, we're just on a public footpath in a minute. We're having a look around, see if we can see any cat prints. Because obviously, if you do look at the Wikipedia page, you can see in Harrow Barrow that they found a big cat print. We don't know what it is. It's either a puma or a leopard is what they're thinking. So there's something here. So we're trying to find it ourselves. And obviously, we've got the camera trap. It's just here in my pocket. We're going to put this down somewhere as well. Leave it for the few days. And uh, behind me, if we get a nice little zoom on that, you can see we've got some alpacas got the sniffer dog out today it's gonna find us a puma aren't you JC who's your good girl all right so we found a little spot which we think is quite interesting just down here on the floor it looks like something has jumped down from here and uses this as a regular walkway whether that's a big cat or not I'm not too sure but it's sort of got the same indentations I don't really think anything else maybe a fox could do something like that um, we've just spotted a deer in this field as well so obviously there's food here if a big cat wants it uh, and I feel like something in this area it's quite dense uh, could be lurking about old sniffer dogs right on the case here she's loving this what you found juice big cats Okay, so my dog is standing here. Look, she's bolt right. What's what's she seen? It was too difficult to get a proper look at what she was interested in. We came to the conclusion it was potentially a rabbit hole of some sort. We liked the area though, so we set the trap up. Okay, we think we found our spot. We're just going to pan it around so you can see it right now. But basically, uh, it looks quite inviting to animals. It's quite a little. It's quite a few divots uh, in the area here, so straight down where I'm looking now, big, big crater of a hole for animals to go into. Same down that side there, and it looks like there's been an animal-made path made uh, straight through the middle, so that's pretty cool. And if you can see behind me, just on this tree here is where we've set up the camera trap. We think it's well camouflaged. I don't know if you saw it as I was talking, but uh, we think it's okay. So we don't think anyone's gonna come in this sort of area. So we're gonna go back to Padstone now and we're gonna rest for the night. And then tomorrow we're gonna go to Exmoor Zoo and have a look at a few real black leopards. So after the trap was set, we then head on over to Padstow. It's a small little harbour town that has an annual May Day tradition where they bang drums and sing and that. Here's the Maypole and here's a dog looking well cute. After having a few pints, we got some sleep and woke up the next day to head over to Exmoor Zoo to get a closer look at some captive big cats. Exmoor Zoo was pretty good. It wasn't your typical over commercialized zoo. It felt like a nature walk with some mad animals knocking about. They have a fantastic cat selection to see and a few of those that I've never seen before. One of which I'd never seen were caracals. All right, the first cat we've seen then is this little caracal here. Now I love caracals, they've got these big ears and they're only small little cats. 
only a little bit bigger than a domestic cat, but these tufty big ears, man, proper like those. Now, could there be some of these knocking about in the UK? I don't know, but it'd be pretty sick if they were. It would be pretty sick, but I'm not overly into the idea that they are, to be honest. Can't deny that they are stunning animals, though. Next cat we saw was another one in which I'd never seen before this visit. All right then, now one of these animals I think is going to be in the UK is this right behind me, a puma. Now these things are massive. I didn't realise how big these were. That is not your average domestic house cat. That is massive. And uh, I've got quite a strong belief that these things are here in this country today. We've spoken to one of the zookeepers, we haven't got him on film unfortunately, but we've spoken to one of them and he believes these are 100% in our countryside today. Roaming around eating our deer and he reckons these, as well as the lynx, could quite easily be out in the countryside chomping on some deer. So also as well, if you can see their paws, you can see those things are massive and obviously something that happened in Harrow Barrow, which we've gone to explore, is a paw print was found without claw marks on it. Now claw marks are attributed to dogs because they can't retract their claws, whereas big cats such as these can retract their claws. Now a paw print was found and it's about the size of a fist, which is about four and a half inches across, five inches across, which could only be described as a puma paw print or perhaps a lynx paw print. I'd never really taken into account how big these cats are. I've said it a lot in the past minute or so, but they're massive. They surprised me really. Anyway, we've got more kitties to be looking at. Okay, so as we can see here from a serval, they're quite small in comparison to the leopards or pumas that we've seen. You can see from their paws, very, very small, typical to sort of what you'd find from a domestic cat. And obviously, you, it'd be really easy to sort of get one of these mistaken for a domestic cat. Like we've shown before, a Bengal cat, very similar to what we can see right here. So you can see with the serval cat here, you can see how it just it sits like just a normal cat. And obviously, it's a little bit bigger than a domestic cat, but still not that big enough for you to sort of think, yes, that is a large cat, sort of like a puma or a leopard. Going on with the domestic cat comparisons once more, you can see from this video that they aren't the biggest. We've already seen in a previous episode as well that one of these was found in someone's garden. While I'm not totally convinced that these cats will be free in our countryside, you can see why people get them quite easily confused with the friendly moggy. This next one though, could you get this confused with a moggy? Okay, and now we can see little Lynx just sat down here chilling. Uh, so Lynx is uh, they're a bit bigger than servals and caracals. A uh, bit of a chunky cat to be honest, a little bit smaller than a puma or a leopard, but these ones here, Eurasian lynxes, you can find them across Europe, and uh, th these ones are quite often what people describe as uh, could very well be in this country along with the pumas. Now, as I've already said, I can't really get on, blo on board with a black leopard or a normal leopard. These guys, 100% I can get on board with being in this country. Alright, now for the showpiece cat we've got. A black leopard, two black leopards to be precise. You can see one just at the top there chilling, and we've got one here start gruffing at me and Kate just behind the camera. We sort of turned up, and he's not happy we're here to be honest. These are the most common uh, cats spotted in the UK. Quite a lot of people come out and say they've seen a black panther. Uh, I can never really get on board with it myself. I just think something like that's too rare to see. Do you know what I mean? That's they're rare as they are anyway, but. To see these knocking about in the English countryside, and no, nah, I'm not really on board with this one. Again, you can see their paws are massive, probably the same size as a puma. I don't know. I just I can't see this one. I think they're too far out of our our range and our comfort zone to sort of have in this country. Although it would be pretty sick if they were here. Now, obviously, the sightings back in the 1980s and the 70s that does attribute to these, because uh, obviously from the the DWA or the Dangerous Wild Animals Act. Um, these were let go. These were let free around this area that we're in, in Exmoor, Dartmoor and Bodmin. But from then, I don't think they're going to have bred on a bit further. But obviously, we've got our camera trap down, so we have to wait to see what footage that brings up. But it's still nice to see these animals in zoos like this. Now, I just want to point out for anyone who was concerned with the leopard doing this. These animals are fed at 4 p.m. every day, bar one day a week, which coincidentally was the day we were there. As of filming this, it was roughly 4 p.m. or a bit after, and you can see they were obviously not happy to not have their food. That was evidently shown in this clip here. Jesus Christ! 
noise. I was trying to shoot something cinematic, but the leopard launched itself at me. I then assumed it was because I put my hand on the glass to film this little bit here. These leopards aren't going to get fed today. I think they have like a feeding pattern, and obviously today's not the day they're going to get fed. And uh, we've we've just accidentally found something out. Uh, when I put my hand against this glass wall here, big man here jumps up at it. So if I try this. He, uh, jumped. I'm not gonna do it again because I feel a bit bad doing it, but that's scary. That is really scary. I felt bad at that point as I didn't want it to think I was teasing him. As we carried on filming, it then started doing this. Being the joker I am, we got this clip. Mate, you're lucky this glass is protecting you. I'd knock you off. I ain't scared of you. I am, I'm absolutely terrified. But in all seriousness, I didn't like how it seemed desperate for food and it made me a little bit sad. I think zoos are necessary and obviously in an ideal world these animals would be free to roam but we're not in an ideal world and these free roaming animals are in serious decline due to us. So after our visit to Exmoor Zoo to see some big cats in the flesh, we kept our camera with us and our eyes peeled but we didn't see anything suspicious out in the wild, not even tracks. We enjoyed the rest of our time down in Cornwall and then on our way back grabbed the camera trap and reviewed the footage when we got home. So after uploading the files to my computer, we noticed there were 11 in 4 nights of recording. Take out two of those due to us dropping the camera off and picking it up again, we're now down to 9 files in 4 nights. So. Are we about to see a big cat on camera? Let's take a look. Unfortunately, no, we didn't capture a big cat on camera. We could put it down to time constraints, really. We only had the four nights to try and get something, and perhaps we didn't pick the best location. Who knows? I fully believe that the people of Haribaro have witnessed a puma in their gardens, and I feel like with more time and effort, we could potentially find one. I don't have enough resources to stay down there for a lengthy period of time, but I feel like I could leave the trap for an extended time to see what it picks up. That could be my next move. There is definitely food there. This time we captured four on deer, not just Muntjac and that sort of expels the myth that Haribaro has lost its deer population. They are still there. I wonder if the cat is too. The big cat search isn't over yet. We've got a lot of things to try before we can knock this on the head. I hope you've enjoyed watching though. Don't forget to like and subscribe with notifications on. I'll see you next time. Take care.